Hi, it's Chris from Epic Systems again. I've put this short video together to explain how you can export purchase order lines out of a purchase order so that you can then reuse that list of order lines on a new purchase order to save you some time in creating the same lines over and over again if you order the same items for different jobs. This is something that we get asked uh, fairly regularly by our customers, so I thought I'd put this, uh, this video together to show you how it's done. So in order for this to work, you do have to have the system options switched on. So in most people's systems, this won't be on automatically. So you will need to ask us to activate the, uh, the export and import of purchase order lines for you. Now, once we've done that, if we go to say, create a purchase order, of course we can get at this from a job sheet as well, but just to show you what we have here at the bottom of our purchase order entry screen is the ability to browse for a file and also download a template. I'll come back to that in just a moment. If I come out of here and go to my dashboard widget of purchase orders, I'm just going to pick on a random purchase order for now. This one here will do. As we can see on the top of our purchase order here with the buttons is now a green export order. So this allows us to export the lines on this order. So if we do that first and we press the export order button, what you'll see is a downloaded CSV file has appeared here at the bottom of my screen. So if I click on that, that will open into my spreadsheet package, which in my case is Excel, and I get a series of columns containing all this data that relates to that order. So on our purchase order here, we can see we've got part codes of parts, uh, references ending in 3, 8 and 10. So if I go to my order line code here, you can see that matches up and the descriptions match up also. Now I mentioned before that you can download a template file from the creation of a purchase order. So if I just go back into our system and press the create purchase order button again, bearing in mind that you could hit the raise PO button from a job sheet. If I hit download template, again, we download a file. If I open that one up, what you can see here, if I hold that side by side with the data we downloaded from the purchase order, the headings match. So of course you can fill this in, once you get used to this, you can fill this in from scratch using the download template button. But the best place to start, and the more common use for this, is to download an existing order from an existing purchase order, so all those lines, and then change it to suit your needs on the next order. The idea is that you complete this spreadsheet using the information that you want to appear on your new purchase order. And the easiest way to do this is by using the create purchase order screen and comparing what you're putting on. So if I do create and purchase order in the background so that I have a blank PO entry screen, and then I load up our template that we downloaded in front of it, what I'll do is I'll bounce between the two screens explaining which field goes where. So if I expand on this one here, the delivery reference, this is just to do with the way that we've presented the file. Um, it is a little out of order, but this is the delivery address location. So the delivery method over here, we have set to deliver to stores. So if I was to choose deliver to stores here, then the delivery address would be one of the addresses that you have saved within your system. So in this particular demonstration system, we've got three locations. I'm going to choose this one here with the reference of main. So it's that reference there that goes here. So I'm going to choose that. The order number is the order number on the purchase order. So by pressing the generate new button here, we get the new order reference there. So I'm going to put that in as my my next order of course we can copy that down if this order was related to a job then the job number I just minimize this is this number here it's the AMS ticket or the job number that relates to this order so in this case I want to order for stores so I'm not going to put a job number in there we can ignore the client field you won't be using that 
uh, the order cost code. Now, in the majority of people's systems, the cost code is actually set up as somebody like a job owner or a supervisor or a contract manager. And that would be the reference for that person. So in my system at the moment, this is the repairs and maintenance cost code where the reference is repairs in capital letters. Similarly, the supplier reference and the supplier branch reference. So if we go back here to our purchase order entry and I type Taylor, I get Alfred Taylor Limited and that's tail01 as the reference. So when I select that, if I then press the question mark on the branch field, there is only the one, but this one can be selected here. And the best way to have a look at the reference if you're not sure is clicking on the plus button next to the branch and you get the references listed here. So if you had a selection of branches to choose from, you could choose the most appropriate branch reference here. So back in our spreadsheet, we can see that we've got the two references already set up. And if you wanted to create a new supplier contact, you can do. Alternatively, you could type the name of someone that already exists in the supplier contact field. And then just expanding the last two ones here, the supplier settlement uh, terms and discounts, those come from this field here. Now the words in the, uh, in the settlement terms have to match exactly the list here. So if you're using the 28 days, then 28 days has to read exactly the same here. The delivery method we touched on uh, just a few moments ago, that is here, and that needs to match the words as shown in that there. So if we expand on the next couple of columns, the delivery instructions and delivery dates, again, they come from here. So if you have specific uh, delivery instructions for the delivery driver, that's the free text that goes here, and the date field from here. So I'm just going to copy that for now and put that in here uh, for our delivery date. Like so the order description that comes from the yellow order description here. So quite often that's defaulted to something like C order lines, but of course it can be a description of what the order is for. And the final bits to the right of our template to do with the order lines are the green section on the purchase order entry screen. So if I expand on these for us just a moment, you'll see we've got the order line part code, the description, quantity, unit of measure and rate, and also the VAT code. And that information comes from here. It's all this information there. So the code must be the actual reference. The description is the description of the part, quantity. The unit of measure is the words that go with that unit of measure. So if I just to click on there for a moment, you'll see we've got bag each and so on. It's the words on the left hand side is what you put in there. And just finally bouncing back to our spreadsheet, we would put in the rate, which is the net rate per item. And where the VAT code is set against a product, you can choose a VAT code as well. S is just standard VAT. Now the order line nominal code, if you are using nominal codes against your orders, that would be the code that comes from here. So once you've finished with your spreadsheet, you would save it in a location where you know you're gonna be able to find it again. And then we would go back to our purchase order and use this tool here to import it. So going back to the purchase order entry screen, if we hit choose file, browse for the file that we've just finished completing, and then press save. There's no need to complete any of this information because all this information comes from the file. So by pressing save, this will then import the file. Now, of course, if this was successful, you'll see a message similar to what you can see here, where it says that the file has been successfully processed. One purchase order with three lines were imported. Now it may, of course, if you've got something wrong in the file, produce a red bar, and that would contain a message explaining what potentially went wrong there. So if I do a very quick find purchase order now, and do where the creation date was today, we can see here that a purchase order has been created against the supplier that we we said it's very stock delivery and also we've got the three lines here imported successfully 
If you've got any questions at all about anything you've just seen, or if you find that you're having any errors when you're uploading your files, then don't hesitate to give us a shout. We can talk you through it.